It's the extra poo that makes all the difference. So I picked up this game from Steam. It's called Gunfield. And I got it on sale when it like first came out. Came out what, about November 15th of this year. And in the first couple days that it came out, I, I put something to the tone of like eight hours into this game. Which is amazing because it's really only got about maybe 30 to 40 minutes of content tops. But I have just played it over and over again. And uh, it's not because it's a spectacular game. In fact, I would go as far as to say it's, you know, baseline okay, right? Uh, it, you know, I picked it up for, you know, it was on sale. It was normally $3. I got it for like two fifty or something like that. And, you know, it's occupied a pretty good chunk of my time. I want to say it's one of those games that follows the philosophy that if you're not doing anything new, you just got to do everything right. And for the most part, it does that. It's it, it's got the shoot 'em up thing going on where you're flying in from the bottom up to the top and all the enemies come in and you're shooting them. But the catch is it controls and levels up a lot like Vampire Survivors, which is a seems to be a popular mechanic amongst the budget game programmers these days. It, it's I imagine it's not a difficult system to implement and of course anything we can't qualify with it's a budget title or it's been done a million times before we can just follow up with it's in early access but it's a solo developer goes by the name of shiv and they are very responsive to feedback what little feedback they've gotten so far and they've already done a couple of updates uh with little quality of life improvements and bug fixes and things of that nature now, as to why this particular game has occupied so much of my time, I could think of a couple reasons for that. I mean, first off, it plays one-handed. You don't have to push any buttons while you're playing, really, except to pick your little items off of a menu. And lately, because I've been having some problems with my right hand and I've been having to save all of my, my editing chops and whatnot for, for folks like Stephanie Sterling, which I, I don't know if you knew this, but I edit stephanie sterling's work over uh, at uh, that channel i do the jimquisition it's the co-editor you know and so i gotta save my health and pain-free status as it were for editing those episodes so i haven't been wanting to like use my hands for a bunch of extra stuff during the week so it really helps out to have these games that can be played one-handed uh, plus, you know, on top of it all, I, I, I'm i certain there's a joke that could be made uh, about a one-handed shoot 'em up uh, What is this, Cho Heineke? <laughs> for, for those of you that remember Cho Heineke, if you don't, look it up on your own time. But it's, uh, it's a fun little piece of Japanese media right there. So yeah, the fact that I can play the entire thing left-handed and leave my right hand to heal and nothing else, uh, that's one of the main reasons I've been playing a lot of this and a couple other games that are controlled in a specific way like that. But uh, there's another reason, and it sort of comes to the reason why you see in this whole new little animated format that I got going on here. Uh, and it's because I've been thinking about it for a while. That, you know, I want to do like a video games review kind of thing as well, because it's a lot of fun to engage with. I have a lot of fun editing Stephanie's videos on these topics, and I would love to be able to contribute something to that genre. But here's the thing. Uh, Stephanie Sterling is, uh, is a seasoned games journalist, has actually worked in that field, uh, knows a lot about that stuff. You know, a lot of the other folks I admire that do these sort of reviews, they have something to bring to the table. They're game developers themselves, you know, and I mean, I, d I dabbled as a hobby back in the day, and uh, if you're familiar with uh, 2016 Doom and the Snap Map community, I had a pretty high-profile Doom Snap Map that I did there called Devil City Ransom uh, that was uh, very high-profile for that brief period in time when that was a thing, you know. Um, but, you know, I'm not a game developer, really, you know, and so it, it's always been more just sort of a hobby. So I can't really claim any sort of expertise in that area, you know, and I can't claim any expertise in being a games journalist, you know. I am little more than a semi-qualified super enthusiast uh, with a lot of opinions, and 
you know, they, that's, you know, there are a, a bazillion folks that are doing video essays with those qualifications and nothing else, so hey, why not me? But I'd still like to bring something new to the table. And so I was thinking, you know, well, what's the reason why I played a bunch of, of Gunfield? You know, this game with not a lot of content that I nonetheless sunk hours into. You know, why is that? Well, it's because when I play these games, my mind just gets to thinking and my mind goes places. And I thought it might be a little bit of fun to do a series of videos based on not necessarily the game itself, although I do want to make sure I'm getting some review stuff in there, but also to kind of let you know the areas where my mind wanders when I play these games. The sort of topics that are brought up in my head and the opinions that sort of formulate with that. There's something I could share with all of you, you know? So for this, the first episode of Let's Wordplay... Um, I would like to share with you some of the things that went through my head while I was playing Gunfield, a game that's okay. So the funny thing about okay is it's not great. It doesn't stand out, you know, but it, it's also not terrible. It doesn't stand out in that way. And so it's really difficult to talk about things that are just okay, you know. Nobody builds an entire channel around that middle ground you know there's that you don't really you know see too many people that are making entire careers out of commentary on things that are just okay which in itself is kind of interesting because we talk about mediocrity a lot when we're commenting on things in the media we talk about how oh mediocrity seems to be the thing that is super popular but it's only popular to watch it's not really popular to comment on mediocre things you know nobody sits around talking about how how perfectly cromulent and serviceable this episode of uh, whatever show we're watching was it's like at the end of the year nobody's waiting around for the you know the top 10 most mediocre games list right ostensibly they're looking for the you know the top 10 greatest and the top 10 worst and most folks that do their format will tell you that the top 10 worst is always the one that performs the best and in fact, when I was editing the last video that I just did for Stephanie Sterling, which was the one about Hogwarts Legacy uh, getting snubbed at the Video Game Advertisement Awards there, you know, a lot of folks were in the comments uh, defending the game and, uh, you know, trying to say how great it was, right? While there was a whole other side of the argument that was trying to talk about how bad the game was. And here's the thing, taste is something that is going to be, you know, it's not universal across the board. There's no thing, there's no objective marker you can point to and say, you know, this game must be declared great by everybody who is a player of video games, right? So, you know, anybody can come along and say a game is great and a game is not great and that sort of thing. But at the end of the day, when you really like, look at the impact that Hogwarts Legacy had on the zeitgeist, it basically disappeared from it disappeared from the zeitgeist almost entirely within, I want to say, what, two or three months of it coming out? Nobody was even talking about it anymore. Every once in a while, somebody would be like, hey, you, anybody remember that, that whole, you know, hog farts prophecy or whatever, you know, like that, uh, I seem to realize nobody's really talking about that. It's like a lot of people would talk about this, you know, the game. So when I look at it from that aspect, you know, I didn't play the game myself because, well, several dozen reasons the main one being i've just never been a fan of the of the the series you know even before rowling pooped the bed on that you know like it, i've never been a fan at all you know i'm not someone that really should be commenting on whether or not the stuff's any good because everything that was ever presented to me and trust me i had a lot of opportunities to have you know that particular franchise presented to me yeah, it certainly spared no expense in letting me know it existed. But nothing about it compelled me in any way, shape, or form. So I wouldn't know the good stuff from the bad stuff. Uh, what I do know is, you know, the, the sales figures and things of that nature. And I remember the whole run-up when the game was being produced and it was announced that it was being made by uh, that Avalanche outfit. You know, the one that was probably best known for, oh, let's see, there was the... 
the Pizza Arcade games with the off-road trucks, they did those. Uh, they, the Attack and the Power of Juju, which I brought that one up on TikTok, and you know what's hilarious about that is all the people that came out suddenly defending that game, and who's spared a thought for attacking the power of Juju in forever? Oh, only people trying to be contrarian to somebody making a comment on the internet, of course. And that's when it sort of came around to me that one of the things a mediocre game can do to make more people think about it and discuss it and, uh, more importantly, attribute qualities to it that might not be there uh, would be to, uh, you, you know, spark some interest in the contrarian set. Now, look, one of my things is reading tarot cards, and there's a, a common misconception that tarot readers think they're psychic or are psychic or can read the future, and that's not how tarot works. I'd be happy to sit down and explain it in another video, but for now, what I am trying to say is I am not, nor would I ever claim to be, a reader of minds, and so therefore, I can't tell how earnest people are actually being when they're defending the wizard game. What I do know is the people whose opinions I do trust, people like Stephanie Sterling and Yahtzee Croshaw and, and several other folks uh, in that circle of reviewers have all taken a look at the game and said, you know, if you're sick of the sort of open world crafting collectibles thing, uh, this is not going to change your mind on that. It, 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 it does that incredibly poorly. All right. So, you know, like from a gameplay perspective, uh, I am... Yeah, I, there's nothing really there for me to grab onto just there. And so I have to think in my head, it's like, okay, if somebody's defending the gameplay, right, the people who are most familiar with that style of gameplay say it doesn't even stack up in that department. So people who are defending that particular gameplay may just be doing it out of a sense of nostalgia. And here's the thing. I'm not even saying that's a bad thing, right? It is okay to like a licensed product because... It's a license for a thing that you like to enjoy. Simulationism is totally a thing in enjoying a game. You can in just enjoy existing in the world of whatever it is you're trying to indulge in. And if this gives you that opportunity to be the little special wizard child that, you know, gets to do the, the Harry Potter fantasy thing, wonderful. You know what? Skyrim is the same deal. Fallout is the same deal. You know, any of these sort of, you know... It, role-playing games that you can jump into and be the person. That's what they're there for. It's okay. And here we are circling back to that word. Okay. Baseline. Mediocre. It's not something that you're necessarily gonna do a whole video about where you're reviewing it and unironically comparing it to, to the best games ever and like wanting to give it an award for just how good it did. I mean, you want to give it an award because of something it did for you personally. Wonderful. But... Uh, what I'm not, I'm not seeing that, honestly. Like, when I, Here's the thing. I do have to go through the comment sections of the videos that I edit. A lot of that is to get feedback because I'm still sort of new at this thing, you know? Like, I, I when I'm editing episodes of the Jimquisition, I want to know what's working, what's not working. What the people who actually watch the series and enjoy the series, you know, make a note of that. You have to have enjoyed the series prior for me to take your feedback seriously. Anyway, when I go through this comment section, and I see all these people just vehemently defending the game, you know, and it's, you know, saying just how great it is at doing these other things, like, look, I'm not going to disagree with you, okay, but it seems like you are trying to ascribe greatness to a thing that, by and large, the zeitgeist has decided is a mediocre example of the genre, okay? It's okay if it appealed to you, but... To get angry at somebody for whom it did not appeal to, it seems counterproductive, right? And I'm looking through the comment section, and the only thing I can think nine-tenths at a time was some of these people that are leaving multiple comments and, you know, it, 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 like, just taking personal jabs at Stephanie and all this other stuff, and all I can sit here and think is, you know what, I'm paid to be here. What is your excuse? You know, what, what do you have so much invested in here that you feel this need to do this, right? It's like, if I feel the need, if I feel this much of a need to discuss something that's on my mind, I'm going to turn around and make a video about it. Well, I don't like what I'm doing right now. And you know, that is a thing I check every time, too. Like, when somebody's leaving these comments, I always check and see what the, their content on their own channel is looking like, right? And inevitably, there's not going to be a lot there. Now, here's the thing. 
Like, a lot of these same folks who are huge defenders of AI and all the stuff that it can do, it's like you can get a robot voice to read for you. You can put a little animated thing on the screen. There are so many ways you cannot be personally involved in the content that you create, and yet you are still choosing instead to booger up someone else's uh, you know, someone else's content and uh, hang out in their comment section and tell them how much you don't like the thing that you are giving all of the the algorithmic engagement goody cookies to. You know, like it, it just it baffles me. It really does baffle me that you are that invested to the point where you are instead of doing something that could have a much wider impact that could be, dare I say, reusable, because you could just take this video and send it to people and say, here are my thoughts on the topic, so I don't have to repeat myself, you know. Um, you could be doing that, you know. You could be doing something that uh, has some sort of an actual impact and allows you to sort of, you know, have a stake in the game, as it were. But instead, you're you're arguing with a comment section that, by and large, uh, is either paying no attention to you or just enough attention to establish that nothing you say has any bearing on what it is that I'll be doing next, you know? So so the bottom line is, I'm here, I'm sitting here, I'm playing this, this Gunfield game that is certainly not going to win any awards, right? At least not in its current state. I mean, it, it, I I honestly hope I'm wrong about that. Honestly, the person that sat here, you know, the Shiv person that made this Gunfield game, I certainly do hope they work this to a mere shine, you know? I hope that... You know, all of the little things that they're planning on adding to it happen, and then they just they, they don't lose that enthusiasm, and they keep adding more. That would be best-case scenario. It would be terrific if that happens, right? Um, but if it doesn't happen, it's whatever, because I just enjoy the time I spend with this piece of media, and I don't necessarily have a need to you know, get onto other people's... You know, if I see a video of somebody saying, oh, this, this Gunfield game, I, I put you know, 10 minutes into it, and it was the worst 10 minutes I ever spent with it. You know, I'm, you know, you do you. I'm not going to uh, live in your comment section for a day and insult everything you are and, and invalidate your experiences. And that's the big one right there is, you know, it, it, the idea that a mediocre game like, you know, Dog Farts Domacy, uh, like, got people so up in arms, like, uh, and, uh, of course, you know, I, I know really why it is, you know, I'm, I'm not blind to these things, you know, there are certain, uh, types of folks that, uh, they have a lived experience that other people think is completely performative or for attention or something to that nature. Oh, so it occurs to me while I was editing this that I totally, uh, did not actually say what my opinion is about, uh, that whole thing there, and somebody's probably going to watch that and be, oh, you dodging the topic, all that other stuff. So I'll tell you what, why don't we take a moment here to just make it perfectly clear. I do think queers and trans folks are awesome, and in fact, I prefer their company. Furthermore, while I think the concept of gender, uh, by which I mean the performative and aesthetic qualities assigned and or forbidden to people based on a wholly unrelated and oversimplified binary concept, is a personally irrelevant topic that creates more problems than it solves, I, I nonetheless acknowledge that my privilege to hold such an opinion would by and large not be possible without the trans folk who have fought and continue to fight for my right to hold them. That being said, I do not place queer or trans experiences or the people who have them on a pedestal. And I have determined by my own lived experiences that uh, queer and trans folks are just as capable of being stubborn, petty, short-sighted, and reactionary as the status quo warriors who routinely make their lives difficult. I do not think their reaction to the Wizard game was an example of this. That one was justified. Moving on. You know, like... Here's the thing, it's it's a pretty easy call to, you know, look at somebody that chooses to make content on this platform and accuse them of wanting attention, you know, because, no, no, it's it's a little hard to claim that you just tripped and fell and, and accidentally made an entire 10-year uh, web series, you know, like, you can't really do that. I mean, obviously, you, you do that because that's a thing that you might desire, it, which does, of course... Uh, beg the question, uh, what, what is it about attention that uh, is so bad to go looking for? Uh, I mean, I would assume the answer is none because, you know, I, I can't imagine that the folks leaving these kinds of comments in the comment section aren't looking for some attention themselves. You know, it's just they're sort of looking for a slightly easier way to get to it, you know. 
Which is another little irony, you know, people that talk about, oh, there should be no easy mode in Dark Souls. But, uh, you know, no, we're going to have easy mode in the comments section, though, where we're just going to, you know, hit repeat on the same, you know, six uh, you know, blanketly offensive lines about a, a particular group of people. You know, that's, yeah, but, you know, no, we want our video games hard, but our discourse should be easy. <laughs> okay, whatever. I am getting way off track, but it's sort of the point of this series, I guess. You know, I'm just my mind wanders when I play this game, you know. But, but yeah, I, honestly, you know, I think that's the argument I kind of want to go with. There is that that is the that is the joy of a mediocre game, and if it wasn't for the fact that a not really into Harry Potter to begin with. And B, uh, I'm not really into the open world crafting collectibles thing anymore. That whole thing got exhausted for me. You know, I, I kind of need a little more than that. Uh, and C, uh, you know, on top of everything else, I happen to know uh, who's getting money in their pocket. And if you're going to try and convince me that the JK lady doesn't make any money off of the anything that has the, the little magic kids wizard school on it, hey, you ain't got enough gas in that lighter. There is a whole bunch of documented evidence of how money is made off of this stuff. Clearly, this is not a hobby for JK. She's not handing this property out to anybody just for funs and giggles. Uh, it, money's being made here. Anyway, the other point is that these chuckleheads already made their money. You know, at least the ones that worked on the game. Yeah, I am, um, as far as like everybody who's, who's making the, the money after the game, it, you know what? I don't even know that it necessarily has to be the discussion or even part of the point I'm trying to make. I think it has just more to do with the fact that I'm I could really care less who's making what money off of it. Which, by the way, that's your cue to. Stop trying to tell me, uh, oh, well, you know, this Hogwarts game made X million sales and all this other stuff, you know, like, like people don't buy garbage in this country, you know? Like, you're never going to win the argument that just because something sold a lot of copies or people bought a whole bunch of them, you know, people buy a whole bunch of a lot of things that they shouldn't buy, you know? McDonald's is still, like, the number one popular restaurant in America, and it's not because of their, their healthy choices menu, okay? Yeah, so anyway, I'm about to beat this boss. I should probably bring this whole discussion home. Being okay is just that. It's just okay. But I really do think it is worth the time that one spends asking themselves why they like a mediocre okay thing. And, you know, it's not to say that there's any wrong reasons. Uh, I'm sure there's a couple. I'm, I, I'm going to go ahead and say spite buying is probably one. Like, if the literal only reason you're enjoying something is because you know it is making life uh, more frustrating or difficult for another person out there. Uh, you know, if, if that is, like, the sole or primary reason, that's probably not a good reason. But by and large, you know, here's the thing. I... I I play big rigs. You know, I, I play games like that. I My favorite thing to do on Payday is to rush over to Steam and and set the price to under $5 and see what just came out. I unironically enjoy this activity because of things that are personal to myself that make a mediocre thing great. And I am also willing to attach my face, my name, and my voice to those opinions because those opinions don't rely on the exploitation or marginalization of other people. In other words, I don't need to think that you suck for me to think a mediocre game is great. So if you got a hankering to play a little fun, snacky, mediocre game, uh, I can highly recommend Gunfield. You know, you can, again, play it one-handed for whatever reasons you choose. And again, if you're looking to argue with me about this in the comments, uh, be advised, again, uh, I, my right hand is in no condition to getting the little uh, typing tete-a-tetes with uh, people who have no skin in the game. So either make a response video or just let it lie. Yeah, I know my little animated avatar is using two hands. It's, you know, it, there's a certain separation of reality and fantasy. You just got to accept with these things, okay? I'm, you know, it, it, you don't really think Yahtzee has little white balls for hands, right? But anyway, totally off topic. Uh, Gunfield, it's a game with some nice little pixel art. It's, uh, it's on the high end of mediocre as far as I'm concerned. Uh, definitely give it a check out, huh? Anyway, thanks for hanging out with me for a bit. And uh, thanks for your time. Bye.